Uh, so TLDR, we're currently heading towards the LB7 through, um, LB7 through, um, Area 51, following Mexico into the, uh, South American region. Our mystic code is retrieved. Feels good, man. It seems that everything is all good to go. As expected of Miss Havilland, she does a fantastic work. This will be your, uh, this will be your seventh lost belt co- No. This will be the mystic code that'll be used to fight against the foreigner god. AKA, that's your, um, if you go, no, that was a plug suit. So that was the upgraded plug suit, if you didn't know. Uh, so essentially our Arctic code changed into the, uh, um, the updated, um, uh, updated plug suit. Within the storm border, currently it's moving at a speed of 900 kilometers per hour above, uh, yeah, above, uh, ground. And we're heading towards the, uh, South America land, uh, yeah, the, the continent of South America as we speak. Roughly, we'll be there shortly in about four hours. I do not think you'll be able to take a full rest. However, would you like to take a two-hour nap in the meantime? This is I'm perfectly okay. So this mystic code is anti or aka fighting against the foreigner god, huh? Oh, not even folk good answers. Hmm. All vital looks pretty good. Uh, even during the assault shift, right? Emergency, yeah. Emer uh, during the emergency departure during Toram, it seems that there's no problem whatsoever for now. Hmm. With your vitals looking like that, You'll be able to function in South America, no problem. You'll use your full body to your, uh, yeah, to your efforts. Thank you very much, Miss Da Vinci. I really can get myself more confident you saying that. Um, it's that even it might just be a self-reflection or self-analysis on my part, too. But I, I feel like I've have or felt more accomplished and more well-rounded than ever before. Not using the black barrel. However, I think I've started to feel easy or able to handle Ortenax a lot more better than ever before. <laughs> I definitely see that to be the case. And yet, from the looks of it, all your physical strength and your natural born abilities are increasing in parameters. <laughs> At this pace, you'll probably ranking among the top servants in no time, I bet. After all, you are uh yeah, you are the representative fighting force of us gnome Cardia, you see. Uh, uh y yes. I'm very grateful for you that you uh, uh, take high value of me, and with that, I'll do my best to get better. Oh, um, let me tell you this before we get out of hand or out of topic. Whenever it comes to use of the Black Grail, I'm gonna have to start restricting you on that, okay? これからは単純な魔力制圧による砲弾を起用すること。アンコルベリッシュメジャーを使ったライフスケールの計算、ブラックバーレル式のあデッドカウンター正規は禁止だ。あれは君の体にもマスターの運命力にも制がかかる。Okay. So it says, yeah.、Um, from here on out,、uh, if you're going to fire, you're going to only fire barrages of magical,、uh, yeah, but magical concentrated aptitude bullets. 
Uh, that will be our oper- yeah, that'll be our basic operation when starting these bullet counters. Due to the fact that trying to occur- uh, trying to accomplish unco- Trying to accomplish the unaccomplished measurement of the life scale calculation using the actual black barrel, um, concept setup to construct that bullet, the dead counter- uh, yeah, dead counter against living creature is definitely off limits from here on out. After all, the concoction, uh, yeah, the uh, feedback, or AKA the, yeah, the feedback of doing the actual Black Grail, uh, Black Barrel, will definitely affect your body and Master's um, fate, uh, strength of his fate, after all. And it's, you know, as to say, you can't shoot it or you can't target during uh, public, as you noticed, right? And I've already told that to Protag, too. Uh, it says, yeah, the range and the damage that it'll cause, its trajectory and its uh, area of effect is way too strong and way too wide. If we make a, if we make the slight mistake, pedestrians can definitely get injured or decimated. Yes, I believe that is the correct judgment. After all, the dead counter, aka the uh, yeah the bullet that ceases life, is definitely a gimmick that goes against the world's law. I believe that's it is not something we should be drunk on or we should be relying on twenty four seven for. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. After all. The fact that the using concept of death as a weaponry sequence, uh, no wonder Atlas deem it to be danger and put it away, you know? Besides, normal servants, at best, they're gonna be, you know, spiritual. Even if it's physically manifested, their body is made up of ether at best. Uh, it says it's not, uh, yeah, it's not called flesh, right? Uh, AKA meat body, right? It's not called flesh. And besides that, uh, they should not be able to, yeah, they should not be able to use the strength of what the recorded in the heroes of the throne. Oh, that's an interesting fucking gimmick. Dan Vinci kind of says here. Yeah, after all, they're not, they don't have actual flesh, and uh, even in their prior form, uh, anything that gets recorded into the Heroes of the Throne is the maximum parameter they're allowed to be given. So they won't mature or grow or get out of hand from the record that we already know for. But, as you can already know, Demi Servants is one of the few exceptions and a couple of others. This is due to the fact that uh, Demi servants are created by uh, converging heroic spirits as Saint Graf into a human body. Unfortunately, you can't turn into a spiritual form, however, but you have flesh and blood at the very get go. And because of this special advantage, uh, because of this special feature, you technically have a decent advantage compared to the heroic spirit. Uh, it says, I've told you this before, but let me repeat myself. Your St. Graf patterns and your St. Graf strength is growing uh, yeah, day by day in order to adjust with your flesh. No. Um, when I say growing, it's not like a physical manifestation of you just maturing in as the day goes like a human functionality. It's more like a spiritual or mental type 2 and change and features, I suppose. But we don't have to go to details. The problem is, is that little by little, that you're getting to the problematic factor is that you are walking towards a heroic spirit that has life. えっと、サーヴェントが魔術世界では何と言えてるか知っているね。あ、現、あ、現形、あ、あやかしレコードだ。記録だ。What? 
どちらにせよ今以上の力を求めるなら君は時期デミではなくなる。Uh, okay, okay. Uh, it says in、uh, AKA in the mage world, servants、uh, that, are become, uh, yeah, that are becoming little by little to getting closer to actual living legends are、uh, very dangerous. And I believe that is Kyokanki Rekordo da. Dotsura ni sel, ima ijo no chikan sel. At this pace,、uh, yeah, at this pace, if you gain more strength and if you gain more. Than ever, you are probably going to stop becoming a demi servant and actually be categorized as a real servant. So, you should definitely、uh, yeah, you should definitely think about that because, after all, growing is an irreversi irreversible factor. Uh, it says, Yeah, in worst case scenario, all you need to do is just throw away Orutenasu. Strip,、uh, strip yourself from the armor and just return to the border, okay?、Uh, it says, We are not, yeah, we are not the we who were not,、uh, were not able to help back in the day. Gnome Karadea has a lot more allies we can trust now. We no longer have you as only battle support. So if you feel like you're in danger, make sure you call us out so we can all fight it together. Even Protag knows that part, at least. You guys,、uh, you two still haven't forgotten or given up on Olga Murray, right? To rescue her? Of course, that challenge, I'll take it on as well. After all, even, yeah, no matter how you look at it, that's definitely the Olga Murray that we know, right? Even though currently we have no clue how we can accomplish such crazy feat, but maybe if we were able to neutralize her and render her useless, there might be a chance for a conversation to solve all this, right? Nice little cute moment. Yeah, I said Black Grail. It's supposed to be Black Braille. Sorry. It's Black Barrel. Uh, yeah, Black Barrel is going to fuck us up eventually if we keep using it. Yep.、Uh, Black Barrel should not be used more than, like, once at all. <laughs> But we keep using it. Uh, AKA, the main ship is,、uh, is about to contact the South,、uh, South America region very soon. Uh, from the distance from Mexico to Guatemala, there is no enemy detected that'll get in our way. From here on out, after we、uh, quote unquote、uh, allegedly across the sea,、uh, the land of white,、uh, bleached emptiness, we'll be able to reach the storm wall of the South America in about 20 minutes. Our operation will begin. So get ready. Good.、Mm. Gnome c u t t e r d i s all staff to their stations. Unfortunately, this battle plan and tactics has,、uh, yeah, has been pushed earlier than anticipated. However, preparation was already completed.、Uh, yeah, preparation was completed just in case of these circumstances were to happen. There is no need for any of us to feel, uh, yeah, feel、um, we're being rushed. There is no time necessity. Do you understand this? Um, advi uh, mechanical advisory. That's right. Especially with the trump card that we have against anti foreign god. We have the Holy Blade.、Uh, yeah, the Holy Blade, aka、uh, Divine Construction, created by the concept of the Holy Blade. We have the Hume Barrel. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Does that say rape roof or rape roof? That says rape roof. Uh, AKA the proper human history using its history and using humanity at its actual bullet. It is a cannon that is 
uh, human, uh, yeah, Hume Barrel, aka Human Barrel Rape Proof. Rape Roof. Uh, essentially, what it means is that it stay, uh, it could, uh, it uses humanity's concept as a bullet and uses the quote unquote, um, uses the future as a proof to shoot a bullet that proves the future. So essentially it's creating a concept of humanity within a bullet that shoots the quote unquote fact and the concept that the future is ran by humanity. So it's essentially, it is, um, future proofing it meaning that it's a bullet and a concept or a weapon that specifically states that humanity overcomes this because humanity has a future i'm pretty sure that says rape roof it's either rave roof or rape roof i'm hoping it's v but i can't see it because it's so fucking tiny Using Torais Megis, using multiple simulation. Um, yeah, using multiple simulations, the experiment number of time went over the uh, couple hundred thousands, but this concept was successful 99.9% .9 at a time with the quote unquote um, sequence of transformation. This ba uh, yeah, this uh, trump card against it will definitely be worth using in actual combat ability. Mm, excellent to hear. That is exactly what the job of a mechanical advisory should do. Mm. Are you said it was a cannon barrage, correct? So does that mean that we're going to be seeing it like, you know... Oh, uh, yeah. Is, is that mean that we have a quote-unquote um, aim, right? A, A.K.A. a command room or a room that's specifically for aiming such cannon. If there's a gun, that means there is a trajectory, if not a aiming console. Does it exist in this command room? If so, after the briefing, I would like to briefly see it. It says, come on, old man. You know who's going to shoot the gun. It's going to be the Merlins, not you. Don't try to use your authority to... Uh, yeah, don't try to use your authority to shoot that shot. Hey, I I know that. Sh uh, GBA. Uh, once again. Once again, he doesn't say his real name. He says, I, I understand, G uh, yeah, Mr. GBA. I was just feeling a little romance, you know? I also just wanted to witness it to feel... Like a kid. Uh, it says, uh, speaking away, uh, yeah, dragging away from the topic for a few moments here. Uh, director, we finally finished the analysis results for the experimental subject E. <gasps> so. What have you got for us? What did you find out? Whoa, dude, this OST is fucking lit. Well, it is something that's very disheartening. What we know is at least uh, the following three things. Number one. Is that the operation table that we witnessed and scanned was definitely a cultural civilization level on our side. It's practically... However, it was the most modern technology that our civilization had to offer during that time. Number two, the experimental subject E was an essentially a living being that was beyond our capabilities. It means it was an identified being of a life force. There is no data that's been traced or recorded in the Torais Megi second could read or find. Number three. The amount of blood vessels remained left in a room like a structural being that looked like it was removed from a physical body. When analyzing and checking the cells and blood vials and its each individual atoms, we figured out that that 
was a property of a human, uh, human being. We would need more analysis to figure more on that one. How, uh, yeah, uh, we need more time to figure out more in depth the detail of what happened and why. But however, I believe going into the South American Lost Belt and clearing that should be our top, prior, uh, top priority. Therefore, I have stopped Torais Megisu from analyzing it any further to get on with our task. Currently, do you have any questions so far? Wait, so you're saying that there's like a leak in the blood vessel? Like, it was bleeding. Like, then does that mean there's a murder case at hand? Correct. Smart. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, correct. A very smart intuition there. It's been cleaned very thoroughly, so it was very hard to notice. However, uh, yeah. However, looking and analyzing through the room that we specifically saw, a traces of blood and flesh has been uh, a yeah, minuscule amount of um, drop of blood and pieces of flesh were found out within the room area. If it wasn't an act of self-inflicted wound or suicide attempt, it's definitely easy to dictate that a murder incident took place in that room. So, um, but that place is an operation table, correct? So, can it be a possibility of a operation error or a miss in the um something when they were working on the table or something ah yes yes perhaps you have a logical point there the possibility of that is 50 percent from what i guessed as well Hey, thank you so much for the uh, Submarino Cappuccino. I appreciate that. But uh, currently we are reading, so it will be turned off. We get a salute in the chat. Bust out your salutes. It says, however, and in normal circumstances, I don't think that you'll see a blood splatter or flesh, uh, yeah, pieces of flesh be located uh, one meter outside the operation table, though. All right, enough talking about experimental subject E for now. We're about to enter enemy territory. Is everybody ready for combat? And is our strength, uh, yeah, do we have enough com uh, combatants to handle this situation? Uh, so before we move on there, I want to talk about here. Uh, so essentially, Mash asked, "What if it was an operating error? What if, um, what if, um, you know, like it was a little oopsie, little little mistake, so the blood spilled, right? Because Shion specifically said there were blood splatters and minuscule amount of flesh uh, located outside the operating table." Uh, and then uh, Xion also backs the statement up by saying it's one meter away from the operation table with the humanity, right? The proper human histories, quote unquote, most advanced scientific machinery that be impossible is what she was pointing out. So now we're about to head towards um, Lost Belt 7. Says so we have enough combatants uh, from here on out. Uh, hello. Uh, Nebo Professor says, leave that to me. Uh, we are at the electronic calculator. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> we're at the summoning area. Uh, with Torais Megi second, uh, has dictated within this mission, four servant summoning is recommended to uh, yeah, deal with this problem. Uh, it says, in, in logical and technicality, we should definitely summon them during... Uh, yeah, during, if not after we infiltrated the LB-7. However, uh, yeah, uh, it's more ecological and more energy consumption less if we were to summit, summon them inside the Lost Belt. However, we had a special case of LB-6, so we're going to do it outside. First, the first summoning of the servant has already been complete. I believe she, or that person, is already heading to the command room as we speak. All other, uh, yeah, all three other servants will be heading to the command room very soon. So please wait in anticipation. Hmm. 
a very smart and enlightened judgment. After all, it'll always be the fact that once we get into the Lost Belt, it would suck that if we can't summon, it'll be a joke of our, uh, it'll be a, a joke of a repetition that we should not, Aya, uh, come forth. Now, with that said, a first servant has already came in, huh? I see. A heroic spirit that'll help us conquer the last Lost Belt. I wonder who it'll be. After all, from what I've heard, South America is quite the absurd and cruel uh, yeah, landscape. Maybe perhaps we're going to see a muscular figure or a monstrosity, uh, a monster looking type, or berserker. Uh, yeah, uh, AKA um, Civilization Forgotten Type Servants, or AKA Gorilla ooh, 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 Type of Servant, perhaps might cut. AKA, he's saying that there might be some animalistic servants. What are you saying by saying, uh, yeah, what are you? what is this meaning of animalistic features and capabilities? That is quite an imprudent word of saying, Director of Cutterdam. Need a Chris! Yes, it seems that you're doing quite well, Protag. As you can see, I have answered your call when the time has come. Hmm? Wait. Have, with this reaction, have you seen each other before? Need a Chris. From the record, I've noticed that you and Mash and Protag saw each other at the Singularity 6. Do you have the memory? Oh yeah, do you have the memory of that Nidocris at that time? It seems that it be the case. It seems that if Ascarudia's records were to summon such servants at certain times during the Saint Graf, it seems that, uh, uh yeah, it seems that a, uh, a functionality of, um... What's, what's the, what's, what's the right word? It's like a roguelike, you know, a carryover system. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Carrying over an experience, I suppose, uh, occurs when summoned by Karadea. In technicality, this is our first time meeting. However, the memory of vagueness still lingers within my mind. So I suppose a introduction is unnecessary. <laughs> you may all raise your heads. Karadea, uh, yeah, the people of Karadea. They're already up, I suppose. It's a little bit disrespectful, but I will look over it just this once. My name is Nidacris, the avatar of, um, I think it was, uh, Osi Osiris? Not Osiris, um, essentially she's the avatar of the dead? No, 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 what? fuck, I forgot. What's her name against Anubis, right? It's not Anubis, but it's an avatar of, um, is it Avatar of Sky? There, there's a specific title that I have to start remembering, because... These titles are going to be significant in LB7. Uh, it should be the Avatar of Sky. Yeah, it should be the Avatar of the Sky. Uh, and the quote-unquote, the one who uh, control... Uh, yeah, the one that, who controls the Mirror of the Underworld. Uh, she should be Horus. Yes. Uh, even though the South America's land might be, uh, I might not be aptitude or uh, used to the land of South America. However, uh, the glory and the influence of the Pharaoh should not be changed even if we go to a foreign location. You all can, uh, yeah, you all can worship and feel jealous of me and rely on me at that too. Wow, so the first servant that will be with us will be Miss Nidacris. That's very reassuring for sure. However, um, I feel like this is not the Nidacris we met before. Something's a bit different about her. <laughs> yes. It's Saint Graf, uh, Miss Mash. After all, as you can clearly see, the Saint Graf, uh, the Saint Graf look is a bit different. Because if you don't know, she's on her third ascension. And she specifically says, uh, I'm at my full power from the very get-go. It seems that using the storm borders, a gargantuan amount of magical energy, my Saint Graf has already reached the final objective, or aka the, um, 
uh, the property and the strength of what I should already have. And with that, I, ha I have an additional skill added to myself so that we can uh, act along without master a special indentation, uh, yeah, special indentation attribute called independent action. He says, that's awesome. That means you can move freely, right? So apparently all the Karadea servants from here on out, or at least the four servants, the four servants that we're going to get from here on out is going to have a special attribute called independent action. That's pretty good. So that means something's going to happen to us that we're going to be split apart for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, Nita Chris, uh, with her full strength, she also has an additional feature called independent action. So you can move freely without worry. Yes, you should definitely be happy about that circumstances, you. <laughs> it's really surprising that you, a ma uh, yeah, you, who, uh, <clears throat> it says, so, you are very happy about that circumstances, I see. I don't know if I should feel, I, I don't know if I should feel pity for you, or I suppose my seriousness has gone away because of this, uh, because of your answer. However... This time, I will practically be a servant that will be able to stand on my own. And I will be moving independently. I do not need any ma uh, yeah, magical resource necessity or connect a master if necessary. I am now completely free. I am no longer binded to Karudea. However, I know what I must do. After all, I was summoned in order to protect the proper human history. In order to bring Karudea victory, after all. Even though there might not be a binding, uh, yeah, there, uh, even though there might not be a uh, binding of promise chaining us together, I, Pharaoh Nidacris, will be your, uh, yeah, will be your strength to the very end. I promise you that. Uh, what? Well, uh, uh, I suppose a servants, uh, yeah, servants necessary for these type of battles, and independent action when necessary would be. Useful, b but... Uh, it says the fact that you would allow that and the sheer amount of magical energy to make them into their final, uh, uh, final... I'm gonna say final ascension, but essentially it, it means giving them a lot of mana and giving them free will, right? That's quite the ballsy play you guys are doing, you know? Do you guys... So that means that you really trust Nidacris as a servant that much, huh? Yep. After all, she even helped us, even when she was technically on the enemy side. <laughs> Nidacris will be definitely the uh, vanguard, or aka um, the protection squad for Master, but technically she'll be uh, yeah, thrown into the uh, current team as a roster so she can help us out. I heard, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, we're uh, assuming and theorizing that once we go to the South America, there's going to be a lot of places we're going to be exploring on foot. So therefore, um, we're definitely going to need a, a mobile a squad. And we might have to fight in groups, if not armies, of creatures and beings. That is, uh, yeah, that is the predicted circumstances. Uh, it says, yeah, we definitely needed a servant or a familiar or a mage that's very good or able to withstand a high heat and uh, taint or corruption. That was definitely the criteria for these roster. Hmm... So I'm on the bodyguard. Oh uh, yeah. So that uh, so that means I'm on a bodyguard duty. Well, if that's the case, I should at least give you my hellos. Yes. Name's Habit uh, Habitrot. I'm technically like a guardian fairy or some sort that resided in Mash's shield. Oh, I see. So you must be uh, yeah. You must be uh, akin 
to the busted uh basute to uh yeah you must be the king of the busted god uh it is very uh yeah it is my pleasure as well to meet you basute to <laughs> yeah and how about yeah it's like huh what's a basute to guard basute to Essentially, Bastet was a god of protection, pleasure, and the bringer of good health. She had a head of the cat and a slender female body. Uh, Bastet was a daughter of Ra and sis sister of Sekhmet, a wife of uh, Pahat, and the mother of Mihos. Since the Second Dynasty, Bastet is worshipped as a deity, most commonly in Lower Egypt. So essentially, um, she's, she's mentioning what Habanyan is, right? Habanyan is the goddess of protection, pleasure, and the bringer of good health. Makes sense. She's essentially a uh, fairy, um, essentially a bridesmaid creator, um, and a protector. So it makes sense. Mm. And with that said, three, two, 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 It says, yeah, after this, three more regular, uh, yeah, regular, uh, Three more special, uh, three more regular servant types will be accompanying us, correct? That sounds excellent. And so, because remember, Nita Chris is special. She has the independent uh, addition. Godorov is saying that three others is just going to be a regular servant binded to master. So this is, that sounds exciting. How reassuring. It's almost as if this singularity is good as ours, gentlemen and ladies. Godorov, do you know what a flag is, brother? Yahari tokui ten yori ise ke techi da da yo kimi tachi. Kondo koso tsungu iska de wa dekina katta saben to taiyu sese de doko deki so da. So essentially, it says uh, that sounds awesome. Instead of a special singularity, a lost belt. Yeah, we're uh, conquering lost belts. This time, we'll be able to bust out the Tunguska operation and summon abundant amount of servants and throw it at the Lost Belt. That operation is finally possible. We will find the Tree of Emptiness and we will immediately eradicate it and go home. Why don't we? Um, huh? What? What the fuck? What the fuck was that? <gasps> Does he still have, um... Oh, dude. Does he still have, um... Koyanskaya's, uh... Does he still have Koyanskaya's fucking uh, lipstick? Dude. Was that the red glow? That'll be kind of fucking lit. And then, yeah, because he's so confident, but after that red light, right... After that red light, he sp he backs his words. He says, ah, oh, <clears throat> I got overhyped myself. Uh, it says, you are quite correct. After all, in the South America Lost Belt, there was no detection of a tree of emptiness after all. Isn't that right, Miss Shion? That is quite correct. The Lost Belt of the South American, there is no specific tree of emptiness type cosmic energy detected anywhere. But then again, even if we didn't detect it, the fact that the Lost Belt still exists is quite problematic. That means that it's either hiding or a chief of emptiness is residing somewhere else. There could be a possibility that for some odd reason in special, ca uh, special circumstances like Britain, it has withered away. Or like in the Chinese Lost Belt, hidden secretly, uh, yeah, secretly well from the other's view. Well, in the very end, trying to find or trying to locate the Tree of Emptiness can be an afterthought. Our first and priority objective is to conquer or try to defeat the foreigner god. We need to stop Yuga Olga Murray from fusing with Alt, uh, O-R-T, right? Orto. Yuga, Ol uh, Yuga Olga Murray, Yu Oruga Murray, and Alt should not fuse. We have to stop her before that happens. Do not forget that top priority objective, everyone. Mm. 
It seems that we're all in accordance and agreeing in what we must do. Fantastic. Perfect timing. The ship is now about to reach the, uh, the wall of the storm. The storm wall. All, uh, yeah, all, um... All, uh... All crew. Prepare to see, uh, yeah, prepare to sit down and take your seatbelts. Because we're about to go in. Uh, tri uh, Triant engine. Starting from one through three. Full throttle into horizontal. Is that horizontal? Because we're going, you know, one way, not up and down. Uh, yeah, energy output to 60%. And defensive barrier output to 40% distribution. Ah. Uh. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, damn, it's been a while since we heard the uh, c uh, composition of what a storm wall was. AKA, we're going to bust through with the storm border, the, uh, the storm wall that is surrounding the Lost Belt, AKA, the dimensional closing off supercell. So the ship... Yeah, the ship is now ready for full throttle. Prepare, uh, yeah, prepare everyone. From here on out, Operation Foreign God will begin. <laughs> 